Hello and welcome back everyone. I hope you had a good break and we are set to start our next trip around Europe. Like you looking at, we are going to visit Athens, Italy, and Spain in our next session. Uh, with three practices that are uh, uh, um, in some ways similar to what you've heard before, but also uh, unique in their own ways. And uh, we're very much looking forward to writing the practices here. And the start is going to be made by Sumit Kim. Uh, she is uh, working for EIT Materials and she's going to present the project for Girls for Circular. Sumi, welcome. Hi, Roman. Can you hear me well? So I'm getting the echo again, but. Oh. Um, if you're also on the hop in that form, uh, as well as the text area, you might get the sound double from. Ah, sorry. Done. Okay, absolutely. That's exactly what happened. Sorry. So you can hear me well now. We can hear you very well. And uh, yeah, you're good to go. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I was indeed following the event on the other uh, tab. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Selene Moutier, and uh, I work as education project specialist um, for EIT Raw Materials. So that is part of the European Institute for Innovation and Technology, um, which is an EU-funded uh, institute. Uh, today, I will be here to tell you mostly about a project that uh, I've been uh, developing and I'm very uh, quite uh, um, enthusiastic about, which is called the Girls Go Circular project. So I will um, start by sharing my presentation. Oh, thank you, Norma. Beautiful. Um, so the Girls Go Circular project. Uh, here it is. Uh, aims to equip uh, 40,000 schoolgirls, so in secondary education, that are aged from 14 to 19 years old uh, with digital and entrepreneurial skills. The objective is to uh, equip 40,000 girls by 2027. And this project is being implemented in Europe, in uh, southern and eastern countries of Europe, uh, as it is now. And every year we are adding more countries to the project. Um, so as I mentioned, the idea is to develop digital and entrepreneurial skills for secondary uh, school girls using an online learning platform that uh, gives information about the circular economy as opposed to our current uh, linear economy. Um, the project started in September 2020 with a pilot phase in six countries, which was Bulgaria, Italy, Greece, Portugal, Romania, and Serbia. At that time, we had about uh, 1,200 girls who were uh, trained during that project. And then in 2021, the project was in uh, full rollout with the expansion uh, uh, to two new countries, Hungary and Poland, and 10,000 uh, girls being trained. And this year we expanded again to two more countries, Lithuania and Slovenia, and we also translated the platform in Ukrainian uh, to accommodate uh, some Ukrainian students who had been uh, relocated to other countries such as Hungary and Poland. So we had some requests from teachers asking if we could make the resources available also in Ukrainian. So as it is now, we have 13,500 girls that have been trained across 12 European countries that you can see on the map. Uh, that uh, is linked to 700 uh, different schools. And as I explained, the goal is to reach uh, 40,000 girls by uh, 2027. This project is funded by the European Union uh, through the European Institute for Innovation and Technology. And it contributes to closing the digital gender gap uh, and uh, it fits in within the Digital Education Action Plan that was mentioned uh, before this morning. 
uh, as part of Action 13 to encourage women's participation in STEM. So moving on now. Uh, so the, as I mentioned, the program is an online uh, learning program. So that takes place on this circular learning space. So I can only encourage you uh, to go check out uh, the uh, EIT Girls Go Circular website and then you uh, can create a profile to have access to all the resources, which is completely free. Um, this learning platform can be used to work for students to work individually or in group, uh, both online or in person. So most of the implementation takes place in classes with the support of schools. We also develop a teacher's guidebook to accompany the students uh, throughout the platform and they are um, welcome so each student uh, needs to do the program individually on a computer or a tablet but then there are several group exercise or challenges that are more interactive uh, to develop also uh, their entrepreneurial skills so for instance they may be asked to um, develop a social media campaign or to raise awareness about climate change or about uh, specific products or services that can reduce the carbon footprint, for instance. Um, they are being asked to do research about uh, influencers or ambassadors who took a stand towards circular economy and uh, um, do a presentation about this person, for instance. Um, the platform includes a total of 13 modules. So the way it takes place is that they will first have, uh, the students will first have to conduct two introduction modules, one on the circular economy and the second one on online safety. Because as I mentioned throughout the program, they will be asked to do a lot of activities online, of course, to develop their digital skills. So it's important to also teach them uh, how to use safely internet. So in terms of data protection, uh, being minors, so um, uh, what to be careful of uh, in terms of disclosing uh, data identity, pictures, videos, uh, but also how to protect themselves in terms of creating passwords, um, filtering information, so identifying fake news versus uh, actual facts. These type of things are covered in the introduction modules. And after they've been through uh, those two introduction modules, then they get access to um, uh, 11 modules that are thematic that address the topic of circular economy from different angles. Uh, we'll see in the next slide uh, some of the examples of the different modules that are available. Everything is available in 11 languages. So far on the platform, we had uh, 32,000 users. Uh, so, because we have, of course, that's majority being students, but also uh, some people who uh, are you know, teachers or uh, headmasters who go to uh, check it out as well, or educators. Um, and of course, uh, this is uh, all about horizontal learning, so developing digital and entrepreneurial skills that will be needed by those girls to then carry on their studies and career. So here you have a screenshot of how the platform look like, looks like. And so these are the thematic modules that are available um, currently. Uh, so we have um, one module on smartphone and electronic devices, one on fashion, so circular fashion uh, versus fast fashion, one on metals, uh, rethinking plastics, circular economy of food in cities, e-waste, robotics, uh, tackling climate change. And currently we're developing uh, five new modules um, that are on um, uh, hospitals of the future. So sector is such um, currently a polluting industry. So what can be done in order to reduce the carbon footprints uh, of hospitals? There is a module about urban mobility, so different uh, ways of having a more sustainable mobility within cities. Uh, one more that is about making cities as such more sustainable, so the way we design buildings and we're able to um, 
rework on buildings rather than building new um, buildings. <laughs> And also, depending on the materials that we're using, some being more sustainable than others. Um, and uh, what's important to say is that those um, so soon to be 15 modules address digital and entrepreneurial skills at different level. So we are directly using uh, the Digicom framework, the Intercom framework and the Greencom framework. Uh, using the different levels of difficulty. So if you look at the first modules that were created, we'll be looking at an intermediate uh, level of uh, digital and entrepreneurial skills. And moving on, we develop some with advanced mo uh, modules and the newly re released one are expert uh, levels. I see in the chat that there's a question about um, whether we involve teachers uh, also directly train uh, young women. So that's very interesting. So currently, uh, most of the implementation is done in classes. So through teachers, we work very closely with uh, Junior Achievement, uh, which is an organization with a big network of schools and teachers uh, throughout Europe. And they put us in touch with the teachers. They organize uh, trainings of the teachers. And we also have, as I said, this um, teacher's uh, notebook to, uh, guidebook, sorry, to help them uh, answer some questions from the students. So um, this is what happens in the majority of cases. Um, in some countries, junior achievement also organize specific workshops um, to do uh, girls go circular uh, within the classes. Um, and the training is uh, yeah, a project-based training uh, for most of the time. And uh, it may be that uh, within another training or within another workshop, we're able to fit uh, also uh, some of the modules. To consider that we have um, done the program, that a student has completed the program, uh, he or she needs to have done uh, the two intro modules on circular economy and online safety, and one of the thematic module. And that can be done in an estimate of six to eight hours. That can be uh, spread out throughout the week or throughout a month or in one day in a one day workshop. Of course, then we encourage uh, the students and the teachers to go back to the platform to do other modules uh, of their choice. They can always select. It's very interesting to see the implementation. We have some English teachers who use the platform to teach uh, English. So they don't use it in the native language of the students, but they use it in English. We have some technology teacher using it uh, to teach about robotics, for instance. We also have um, some teacher more in um, civic education uh, that use it uh, more to raise awareness in general. So it's, uh, it's, it's very transversal. So it can be used in many different ways. It can be that the students choose themselves which module they want to do, or that all the class does the same module. It uh, really depends. So this will be for the modules. And then my last slide before we move on to a little game is in terms of uh, opportunity. So we reward uh, the students and the teachers with a module certificate and a program completion certificate to recognize the skills and competence that they gained um, and also for the schools to recognize their contribution to gender equality in STEM and ICT. For schools it's also a good opportunity to get some visibility on the, web on the project website uh, as uh, pioneers in Europe supporting the digital education action plan. So now that uh, we got this first introduction to the program, I thought we would move on to a little game that I prepared. So let me stop sharing. Mm 
Uh, Norman, I don't know if they can see my screen still. Yes, great. All right, so we'll be using we'll be doing the game on uh, using Jamboard. I don't know if you've used it before. So to be able to access it, uh, I will need to send you the link. So I will put it. I think I will need Norman to put it somewhere in the chat. Thank you. So Norman uh, put in the chat the link to the Jamboard. So it would be great if you uh, could uh, just click on the link and then you'll be taken to that page that I'm showing. Um, and uh, you'll see a small icon appearing uh, with your name or with anonymous if you don't have um, a Gmail account. So first of all, I would like to start with a um, small quiz uh, about women in uh, the STEM sector. So STEM standing for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And uh, we'll be looking at uh, the gender gap within STEM and ICT, so information and communication technology uh, disciplines. So I will start with a very simple question. How many STEM graduates are women? And I would kindly ask you so to go on that second slide and to put a small dot uh, to vote either for 10 to 30 percent, 30 to 50 percent or 50 to 70 percent. So I see already that some people are on it. To add the small dot, dot, you need to go on your left uh, panel bar like this, and then there is a circle, and then you can choose to add a circle wherever you want. So let's say if I want to vote for the yellow, I put the circle, I can make it a bit smaller, and then this would be my vote, for instance. Hmm, many votes coming in. All right, well, the opinions are really divided uh, as we have, uh, ah, okay, I think the maturity now might be on 30 to 50%. Although it might just be because the dots are gigantic. <laughs> yes, I think the majority is on 30 to 50% with at least uh, at least 10 votes um, for this one. So indeed, uh, the correct answer was 30 to 50 percent as uh, one third of graduates from uh, STEM programs in Europe are female. That's uh, exactly 34 percent. What's interesting is that Oh, we still have people coming in. <laughs> Thank you. There will be another voting uh, option coming up right after. So it's quite interesting um, to look at the division because when only looking at uh, scientists and engineering, that number rise to 41%. Um, so you have 41% of um, total employment in science and engineering taken by women uh, in uh, the EU. Uh, 
which is uh, an increase from year to year, but uh, it really depends on the sector. So women are underrepresented in uh, manufacturing, where this number, this rate uh, drops to 2020, 22, sorry, 22%. Uh, for manufacturing, whereas in the services sector, you would have 46% of women. And there are also um, discrepancy between the EU member states with 52% uh, of women in Lithuania, Portugal and Denmark. But uh, interestingly for Finland, this number drops to 30% and Hungary 31%. So this is a map that we show you the proportion of women scientists and engineers. Uh, you can't really see the number, but to give you an idea of the color, so for Germany and Hungary in orange, that means that the proportion of women scientists and engineers is uh, less than 30%, whereas when we move to yellow colors, it's 35% to 40%, and moving to blue, light blue will be 41% uh, to 45%. So it's quite interesting to see uh, this discrepancy throughout Europe. As I say, the numbers are better when looking at science and engineering. Now, we, when we move to ICT specialties, I'll be asking you to do the same vote. And already you can notice that the numbers are already lower. So how many ICT specialists do you think are women? Uh, so please take a vote in the similar fashion. So 10 to 20%, 20 to 30% or 30 to 40%. All right, thanks a lot for your votes. Uh, once again, the majority is right. So when looking at the ICT sector, so information, communication and technology, then women only represent 17% of the workload. So that's when the gender gap is so visible and really needs to be addressed. So thanks a lot for all your vote. It's quite uh, interesting to put this in the context now of um, post-pandemic when we have seen that uh, remote learning can be a um, vector for so many opportunities but also challenges. And uh, we have seen in terms of education that about 6 million students in Europe have been affected to closure, um, by closures of schools during the pandemic and had to shift to distance and digital learning. And it appeared that remote learning um, posed more organizational and time management challenges for girls and women. Because in general, girls receive uh, less access to digital technology and at a later age than boys. And their use of the digital technology will be more limited by their parents. So this was very uh, visible during the pandemic as well that there is uh, this gender gap that needs to be addressed. Uh, that is why we have the Girls Go Circular project in place. Uh, as we repeat, often it is also uh, available for the boys. So when we do it in a class, of course, the boys also participate. But that is really the reason why there needs to be this program that is targeting girls and that is called Girls Go Circular. And in the program, we always include lessons giving role models, female role models in STEM and ICT for girls to have this representation in mind when they will have to pick their studies and careers. So it's about deconstructing the, uh, like the stereotypes that may exist, 
providing female role models and also finding a vector to explain science with very practical applications so that girls don't feel like they're doing mathematics but realize or science where they might be sometimes feeling that this is uh, too complex for them when actually when they apply it to real life situation and challenges that turn out to be of course very competent. So this is very important and this will be my transition to move to our last game, uh, which is about the framework. So I have selected um, about 20 competencies on this board. And I would kindly ask you to move those competencies in the right uh, section. So everyone will be able to move the stickers at the same time. So it might get messy, but I think we will maybe uh, be able to find a consensus at the end. So if you think that the, cons that the competence is from the Entercom framework, so entrepreneurship framework, please move the sticker to the um, uh, top left corner. If you think that it belongs to Digicomp, digital framework, leave it where it is. So that's the right side. And because I thought two frameworks was not enough, I included also uh, the green comp, so the green uh, framework. So please move the sticker to green comp if you think it belongs there. All right, I see a lot of moving. Let's see, very nice, very nice. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. There we go. We're getting there, we're getting very close. So we're still missing a few green competence. Yes, okay, we're missing one green competence. This is some hesitation there. All right, that's actually perfect. Now move back ethical and sustainable thinking to Intercom, and then we have an absolute perfect board. Yes. <laughs> Great, thanks a lot. That's, uh, that's exactly uh, what it's about. And um, Thank you. Thanks a lot. So I didn't select those competences randomly. Those are actually all the competence that we include in Girls Go Circular uh, in all of our modules. So that's why I focused on this one. But I think we could have very long discussion about which one are more important and need to prevail. But, uh, but th thanks a lot. That was a very good exercise. I will uh, have to end my presentation here. Oh, this was the framework. If you want to have a look at them in more detail, Digicomp, uh, the very nice one at the bottom is GreenComp and on the right is Intercomp. So I will have to end my presentation here, but uh, thank you so much for your attention. Uh, I put the address of the website here in the chat. Uh, I will, of course, be in the exhibition. If you want to ask me any questions uh, or exchange, I would be very happy to also show you around the platform, the circular learning space directly. And if you're interested, we are actually having our big annual event for Girls Go Circular, which is the Women and Girls in STEM Forum on the 26th uh, October. It will be online and you are welcome to uh, register and participate. So you can go directly on our website uh, to register there, we'll have a high level panel discussion about gender equality in Europe and what action needs to be taken to reduce the gender gap. Then we'll have a student competition with girls uh, developing an app that uh, reduces gender stereotypes when using science. 
And finally, we'll have a mentoring session for students, uh, putting them in contact with world leaders in STEM. So thanks a lot for your attention and for All Digital for organizing this great event. And I look for, forward to seeing you in the uh, exhibition. Bye-bye. So, oh, Solin, um, before we go, I uh, would like to post some questions from the audience. Uh, we have time for them. Uh, first question that I'd like to ask, how do you ensure that it does actually go online and complete the modules? How do we make sure that the girls actually go online and complete the program? Um, so this is done, uh, this is really done by uh, the teacher in most of the, in most of the cases. So then we uh, like we encourage them to use the platform. They can use it also as homeworks uh, very often or directly in the class. But uh, we can see uh, directly, of course, following up uh, on the data, who is using the platform, in what languages, uh, from which region of, the, of Europe they're using it. Uh, so this is how we, uh, we can uh, track numbers, basically. Right. And the question I'd like to um, direct to you right now is, um, do you also involve teachers or are you um, directly training the young women uh, yourself? And is that done through, uh, is it project based or is it a... a... Yeah, um, I, I think I actually uh, responded before, but so we, we do uh, train teachers uh, in partnership with Junior Achievement. Uh, we organize uh, teacher training. Uh, we also give them a teacher's guidebook to uh, help them go through the modules. And we have a, like kind of sort of a help desk if they have any questions to address us. And we also uh, ask for their feedback after uh, each year. And it is a project-based um, um, training that is being done for a girls' school secretary. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, there uh, have been a few more questions in chat, but I think as yes, you can go through them and uh, reply to them on the um, yeah. um, and also um, can get into further discussions on the sessions as well um, when we sure. again. Uh, Thanks and, so much. and also uh, this uh, great little exercise with competence and um, yeah, seeing what the different opinions are, what should and should not be in, you know, in various frameworks and what should be in more than one. Um, and I think that illustrates very well how much overlap there is between uh, content of the frameworks and um, how uh, tricky it can be to really find a, a framework um, in a closed unit um, with different uh, phrasings for also the various aspects that are relevant for both of them and how important it is to distinguish between these frameworks and to use them uh, in conjunction and not um, just separately. Uh, again, thank you, Zolin. Uh, now, uh, at the next point in our program, we are going to uh, Spain uh, with Alicia, Beatrix, and uh, Sylvia, who are going to talk about Girls uh, to be Digital as a project. Uh, welcome, everyone. And uh, I'll also put your presentation on screen so we can uh, go. Okay, thank you. So, good morning, everyone. My name is Beatriz, and I will be introducing you to Acción Contra el Hambre Means Work. Um, and then Silvia and Alicia will jump in and explain to you in a more detailed way the specific practice that we are presenting for today, which is called To Be Digital. So, Acción Contra el Hambre is an international humanitarian NGO. It's, uh, it has presence in over 40 countries and it has almost 50 years of experience. And its main aim is to fight against hunger. We do this by tackling both the causes and consequences of hunger in the countries we work in. So, for example, think about uh, developing projects in the fields of agriculture and sustainable livelihoods, nutrition, food security, uh, hygiene, 
training in disaster risk management and so on. So we do this in a global level. And then in Spain, uh, we focus more specifically on social labor inclusion through employment and entrepreneurship programs. So we started doing this in 2013. Uh, partly because of the consequences of the 2009 economic and financial crisis that uh, it exacerbated social inequality and social exclusion in Spain, the same way that it happened in many other European countries. So um, there were many families in which none of their members had a job. And because of this, we started implementing employment and entrepreneurship programs uh, to provide participants with key competencies and skills needed to either enter the labor market and find a job or to become entrepreneurs and start their own business. So we develop many projects, but the main focus is always on groups who are at social at risk of social exclusion. So mainly women, immigrants, uh, long-term unemployed people and young people specifically those whom we refer to as needs. So young people who are not receiving education, training, or who are not in employment. And we selected two specific uh, programs from the entrepreneurship branch that are more closely related to today's topic. The first one is uh, an entrepreneurship program targeted targeting young people because it aims to tackle the huge a uh, problem we have in Spain um, when it comes to youth and um, unemployment because 40% of young people can't find a job. So in this project, we provide them with the skills needed to through um, work groups, through individual training contests, and also access to microfinance. They can. Um, get an idea of how to implement their business ideas. And then the second program that we selected is the VET Social Entrepreneurship and is directed towards VET students. And uh, in this program, VET students acquire the transversal and technical skills that they need to develop technical and social companies. So this means companies with a uh, social impact. And then this is um, in Spain and at an European level, we, at an European level, we, see, um, we lead the um, European Network of Innovation for Inclusion since 2016. This is a project co-financed by the European Social Fund under the operational program for social inclusion and social economy as a transnational cooperation project. And its main aim is to promote social innovation among social entities, companies, public administrations, and relevant stakeholders to create a more inclusive European labor market. So the main idea underpinning the network is the belief that social inclusion is an European wide challenge. And because of this, we must address it at an European level. Of course, uh, we have to adapt it and integrate it locally, depending on the context, but we can gain a lot if we put it in common or share challenges and our shared knowledge. And through the network, we help different organizations develop successful European employment and entrepreneurship projects through exchange for good practices. So for example, each year we organize an annual call for good practices on inclusive employment and entrepreneurship. And then we organize study visits and working groups to the venues of the winning organizations. So all they can, there are, there's a space for collaboration and synergies between them. And then also we provide information and assistance on participation about European programs. And this is more or less it. And now Alicia will start explaining the specific practice we are presenting. Thank you, Ea. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alicia, and I'm going to introduce you a little bit about the, the, the idea uh, behind To Be Digital and how it came to, into our minds. Uh, well, To Be Digital uh, is a project about digital competencies uh, for a successful adaptation and engagement to online vocational education and training, teaching and learning. So this is a, a project that uh, answers a call, uh, uh, the specific call from Erasmus Plus. Uh, plus. Uh, it was uh, in, uh, in the specific one 
answer each of the COVID-19 challenges that are arose in, in, in the pandemic. Uh, so we 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 were in the in that situation no? in the pandemic uh, in, within the pandemic and uh, well during this period we realized that the inequalities uh, increased um mostly the the, the youth uh, in the youth, youth youth people and making the the them to to become early leavers from the education and training you know that this situation uh, make uh, this this educational uh, uh, framework more difficult uh, so the 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 vet students um were especially um, uh, well, hindered with, with this, no? Because uh, we realized that the dropouts were increasing as well. So uh, the training divide and also the digital device for the most vulnerable students, the students uh, was also a reality. And uh, well, the fact is uh, that the transversal competencies um, are important to 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 solve this to to try to to solve this and uh, well there is a we realize we realize also about the 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 high need of uh, teacher training on ICT uh, during the pandemic all I think all had uh, examples of uh, difficult situations with digital uh, skills and, and and see how teachers had to deal with with these difficult um, moments uh, with the students no well uh, the present is for sure digital um, we have to prepare learners to to this uh, society to this reality and uh, we we thought that uh, combining digital and transversal skills we we will help them to make uh, to have a better future in the society um, in general, but also in the, in the students' life and learning, and uh, and also to to get a better employee. Um, in the other hand, uh, vocational education and training uh, should be adapted to to provide these high quality digital skills, and, and of course to provide a high quality online training. Uh, so that's why we, we thought that uh, this vocational training should be adapted to all the need, all needs of the students, uh, included those with more difficulties. Um, uh, this vocational training also has to in incorporate transversal at the same time as digital competencies. And um, um, well, this all uh, will be with the aim of uh, providing a better uh, living uh, in a digital in a digital society. Uh, well, and we came up with uh, this idea of this project. Uh, all of us uh, should be digital, but in the framework of the vocational training, teachers and learners should be digital. Uh, for sure, uh, just to ensure the, the proper learning, no? um, and that's why we um, we um, decide to support this uh, digital teaching and learning um, for teachers and for the students. We are trying to uh, make the students learn to 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 learn on uh, online, and teachers to teach online. And in, 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 in summary, um, so we we are trying now because the the project the project is ongoing now. Sylvia will tell you about uh, about the stage we where we are now, and uh, well the, we are um, uh, training teachers. Uh, we are uh, incorporating, uh, creating a, meth a, a very innovative methodology, trying to mix all the the all. <laughs> I don't know if if uh, there are all, but um, the most of the uh, European competence frameworks uh, for, for the elaboration of the, this methodology. 
So, um, well, I think that, that the, um, Sylvia will, will tell you more in detail about, about these, these products that, that would be very useful for, for all. Um, so, uh, we have two main objectives here. Uh, one of them is uh, improve uh, vocational education uh, training teachers' transition to digital education, so they became more effective. And also, on the, on the other hand, for the students to reduce dropouts, uh, early livings uh, in, in the schools, and uh, both the, the personal and professional development uh, for the better employability in their future lives. So uh, I give the floor to my colleague, Silvia. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. Okay, and so as Alicia was mentioning, we started the project right after the COVID with these two main goals, which are um, supporting trainers on how they can uh, deliver online training with better tools, with better knowledge, and making it a less stress a less stressful situation. Because it was, um, uh, yeah, it, it was a very stressful when it, they had to do it all at once with the pandemic. And at the same time, we want to get students to engage to this kind of learning. So the first thing that we found we needed to do uh, in order to, to support them was to find out which are these competences, digital transversal competences that students need to have in order to succeed in this like uh, online learning, working and living. So we have done a lot of work on this and we came up with this to be digital competence framework that I'm later going to present. The results that we got here, all the different competences that we knew were key for supporting learners in this regard is what we have translated into a teaching and learning methodology. So now we know which are the competences that we want to promote. How are we going to do it on an online setting, ensuring that students engage, that they find it appealing, easy, and that they actually feel attracted to this kind of online learning and they don't drop out. We want to equip them with all these key competences, but at the same time, we have to make the process uh, engaging and, 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 well, and to actually meet those learning goals. So that's the Tubi Digital Online Teaching and Learning Methodology. And finally, in order to support them in all the process of achieving those competences, what we need to do is to assess them from the beginning. We need to know what's the start point of these students, what's the levels, what are the levels that they have on the different competences that we're going to develop. And we have to support teachers and trainings in all the process on how they can monitor, see the improvements and further adapt the methodology and the curricula to meet the goals that they have in terms of improving their competence. And so those are the three outputs or the three main things we've been working on. And I'm going to go in a bit more of detail in each of those. The first thing is the framework. And I'm sorry that the, 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 the writing is shown like that. But anyways, I think that at least the, the picture, you, you have it here and you can download it already from from our website. What we did at this point, together with the partners, of course, of the project, was to do a very deep assessment and a comparison between different competence frameworks. Three of them, you probably know them because they're very well known at the European level, and these are the Life Comp, Digicomp, and Entrycomp, because we want to support learners, learners on getting the digital skills for the work life, for life in general, and of course, also for entrepreneurship, because we know that's a key to employment as well. So we did that matching together with other um, international um, competence frameworks. And we came up with this integrated framework in which you can see that we have five main dimensions. We know that it's key to support communication, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, thinking and citizenship but all of them on an online setting, because many of these, you already have them as part of the Entercom or of the live comp. But uh, is, is it the same to communicate on an online setting? Do we need the same skills to communicate when we are on an online meeting or on a presentation like it is today that when we are face-to-face, -to -face, we have to adapt to read and write from 
blogs, different resources, social media, and that's different. So we want to promote specifically these five dimensions and the three competences that come out of each of them on a digital setting. So the digital dimension is always transversal. This is the result, but the process has also been very enriching and interesting because um, if we go to the next slide, you'll see that we have involved different uh, experts along the, the process. Um, on the first stage, what we did was a very deep research on the different competences frameworks, but we didn't only want to have the knowledge, this literature review. We wanted to contrast it with different experts and the, with people that knew about really digital transversal competences. So after doing all this literature review and the comparison between the six frameworks, we hosted a business breakfast in which we counted with different employers and experts in the digital sectors for them to tell us if we were going on the right way, if, if, if we were on the right track with the competences we were identifying. We want them to tell us if these were the key digital competences for the working life and for entrepreneurship, mostly. Um, with their feedback that was actually um, integrated in, in the first version, we um, sent a survey at a European level to gather more feedback from different stakeholders. And again, we met this time with educators on an online cafe, because as, as, as we mentioned, this is a competence framework for life, work, and for learning as well. So the learning dimension, which are the key online um, or the key digital competences that students need to really learn what they have to learn and to engage with the learning process. So we again integrated their feedback. And lastly, we counted with a very group, uh, big group of students uh, in all the partner countries, which were telling us what was important for them to learn, the key competences that they thought were uh, needed for succeeding in their daily life. And we again integrated everything in this framework where you can see the structure. So five dimensions with three competences, each of them, but we actually worked on a progression model because what we want is for students and teachers to be aware of what's the level of the competences and what they need to do to improve each of them. So we stated this progression level for each of the competences with a beginning, developing and mastering level of each of them. The framework is already available uh, and you can download it from our website, uh, which we were showing in the previous slide. Project outcomes, you have the framework, you can download it and you can already uh, check how to use it for developing your learning curricula. So the next step, now that we have all the competences, as I was mentioning, is to really use this knowledge, use these competences for developing a methodology that can support teachers on um, training those competences in their students and, of course, can support students in learning. Um, I don't know if we can move forward. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So this is where we are at the moment. Uh, this is almost done. We've been working on this uh, methodology that is based on some key elements. The first thing is that we want students to develop their digital transversal skills from a project-based learning approach. We want them to learn and acquire those competences as they go in their learning process. So for this reason, the methodology is based on social entrepreneurship. We're facing students with uh, urgent priorities at this moment, so with the SDGs. We want them to identify them and to develop all their skills um, through the different steps of our methodology. Methodology involves as well Scrum, because we know it's very agile. It's something that really promotes feedback and learning in students from a peer-to-peer -peer, um, approach as well. And of course, all the methodology is really, really based on competences. So those are the three key elements. We've um, developed a methodology that is set in seven different sprints following this Scrum methodology. 
first thing we want to do is to tell them about competences and what they have, uh, what they are. And um, we're going to assess their competences so they have already an idea of what they are and what's the level that they're starting from. And from there, we're going to be working on their digital self-awareness, how much they know about the digital skills, and we're going to encourage them and support them in setting themselves goals for digital skills acquisition. They're going to learn about team roles and how to innovate where the different stages and phases of social innovation. There's going to be a lot of ideation on solutions for those challenges identified. They're going to work on a hackathon as well uh, to, to develop their digital social enterprise. And of course, they're going to be um, showing these ideas through pitching and prototyping. But finally, of course, we want them to reflect on how they have acquired all the competences that they wanted to from the beginning through a reflection seminar focusing really on their own learning and um, how they have acquired different digital competences for life, work, and the educational environment. So that's the methodology. This is going to be piloted in, um, in the following months in five different countries in at least uh, one bed center in each of the, of the countries. And we're really hopeful to, to, to see well, how this goes and to get feedback from trainers that we're actually going to integrate in the methodology. The methodology will finally be translated into a MOOC as well that will be open to all teachers and trainers in Europe that want to get new strategies and new methods for uh, implementing the digital strategy, digital competences with their students and learners. But as I was saying, if we want to encourage learning, the learning of these competences, we need to assess them from the beginning. So we've also developed a, a whole method with different tools for assessing these competences. It's going to be happening in three different stages, which are part of the training methodology. During the first seminar, we want to focus on the self-analysis. We're going to provide students with a tool uh, that I'm going to show you right after, uh, where they're actually going to be uh, going through different scenarios, choosing different answers that are going to give us some feedback on what's their level of each of the competences that we've seen before. After that, they're going to get a picture, like a graphic of, okay, so these are the different levels you have in each of the competences, which are the most important for you, which ones do you prioritize, and please set goals for the whole learning process that we're going to have during the methodology piloting, so that at the end, in that reflection seminar we were talking about, they can actually show how much they've learned, how much they've improved through the process. So this implies that we need to have some competence assessment through the process as well. And we're going to introduce competence assessment after each of the single sprints. Um, so we're going to do it from an individual uh, self-assessment point of view. How are students um, seeing themselves and what evidence can they gather that they're developing these competences? What was I able to do online today? Like, did I improve my communication? Was I great at teamwork today on our online meeting with my peers? Um, they are going to gather that evidence and then they're going to trust it through peer assessment. We have gathered a lot of very interesting and innovative tools for that peer and individual assessment that we're going to be embedding in the methodology. And finally, after the methodology, after having their social enterprise built up uh, as an idea, uh, they're going to reflect and um, present their individual journey folio to the rest of the classroom. So this is the evidence that from the beginning, where I started with this, let's say beginning level of online collaboration competence. Now I achieved this very expert or yeah, expert level because I've been working on it like this, this, and this. So this is how the competence assessment is going to be integrated. But the main support tool that we're going to have to do this is the Jobs for Tech tool. This is a tool that we developed in a previous um, uh, project that was called Jobs for Tech. And I embedded a video that it seems like it's not 
going to be able to be displayed well that's fine i think that probably my colleagues are uh putting all the links in the in the chat so you can go to the jobs for tech uh website and check on the evaluation tool this is a self-assessment tool with three potential users you can use it as a student, you can use it as a teacher, or you can use it as a training center. It has already been used and validated for, um, for different entry comp competences, and now we're upgrading it so that it actually measures the competences from the Tubi Digital framework. So each teacher can assign a questionnaire based on these competencies to all of their students they're going to go through different scenarios. So like, imagine that you have to work online with your peers on this certain idea. How would you react? And we have different options they can choose from. Depending on their answers, which we've been working in the partnership, they we're going to get feedback on what's their level of competence in each of the different competences. And the teachers are going to have information from each of their students, but also uh, of the group as a whole, of the classroom. And that's something that's going to support them, monitor and also um, change the methodology adapted to the different needs of each student and of each class. So this is a tool that, as I said, it's already available, it's open for you to use it as it is, but um, it's going to be updated in the probably next month, it's all going to be ready with a new questionnaire, which is the to be digital one. And you can, uh, well, check it out. It's, it's well, a key for us, a key tool to monitor the whole process of promoting uh, digital and entrepreneurial competences in, in young learners. Finally, just an update of something that's coming up for those of you who might find it interesting. Uh, the 6th of October uh, in the evening from 3 to 6 CT, we're going to be training trainers. Um, any of you, if you have learners, students, if you're interested, you can participate in this training on how to implement the methodology that we have designed and how to support learners on acquiring these competences through an innovative uh, and, and project-based learning approach. So we invite you all to register. You have the uh, link to do so also in this invitation. And I think that you should have it also in the chat and we'll be very happy to, to see you there and to share, of course, with more detail the framework, the methodology, and the different ways in which we can assess and support our learners in their competence development. So I think this is it from our side. And um, thank you very much for, for all of, to all of you and to all digital for inviting us to present this, this project. Thank you very much to the three of you. Uh, very well received presentation and uh, this for all the uh, input. Um, I don't see any immediate questions in chat. And um, since uh, time is running away a bit, um, currently uh, we're going to move straight ahead to the next presentation. And uh, if any more questions can come your way, um, you are available in the chat as you have demonstrated a uh, presentation with posting the links. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, uh, you can direct it there or later on in the uh, networking session that we have planned in the afternoon. Now, um, as a next step in our agenda, we are going to the UVIN project. It is going to be presented by uh, Egina, which is uh, represented here by Jo and Rita. Uh, Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Thanks, Norman. Um, I will quickly just um, introduce you to the project by showing uh, the website, actually, and then I will leave uh, the presentation uh, to Felice. So, uh, you win. Uh, it's a project that is ongoing. We are working on it uh, on the main phase now, uh, and uh, it's a K2 project focusing on three main uh, principles, priority areas of the Erasmus Plus program, um, um, gender um, issue, um, green and environmental issues, and entrepreneurship education. This is how it relates to Entrecomp. Um, 
UWIN stands for Young Women Green Entrepreneurs, and uh, we have we are implementing uh, the project with a very wide partnership, as you can see, with partners from really all over Europe who at the same time are um, working with teams of young uh, female youth workers in rural areas. To do so, uh, we have developed a platform and um, with a lot of, ish a lot of uh, uh, features that Feliz is going to present you. Enjoy the presentation. Hello everyone, nice that you're all here. I will give you a quick introduction of you, Win, And herefore I will share my screen, just a minute. All right. All right, you, Win stands for Young Women and Green Entrepreneurs. And also something I have to add, Francesco is with me in the chat and he will give you some um, tasks or a little information that he will share with you. First of all, what I want to introduce to you is the project and what it is all about. Then we're going to explore the UWIN platform that Altea was already presenting to you on the website. And we have a small flash green challenge. And at the end, um, we will be happy to get some feedback from you. So first of all, we would like you to share some experience you have with projects that are sustainable or businesses that are located in your rural regions or in rural areas you know. Just share what you know of good practices in the chat and all the other people can get some nice inspirations like us as well. And now to the UWIN project. It's a project for especially young women to let them take over their life by um, giving them specific tools in entrepreneurial training and especially on sustainable development. And herefore, one main aim is to raise awareness about green thinking because the aim is to support a greener Europe and that um, could happen by sustainable development. The entrepreneurial training is a big part of this whole project because through entrepreneurial training and entrepreneurial skills, women are um, encouraged to uh, find jobs, find niches, especially in rural areas, so they don't have to leave the place and it also fosters the, their employability. We especially focus on the project on young women, because in rural areas there's a decline in employability and women are mostly affected by it. This is also due to um, gender differences and inequality. By the project we want to kind of develop the socio-educational and the personal um, skills of the women and therefore we also focus a lot on social inclusion and community development in rural areas because study shows that when women are encouraged and have like a strong background of uh, or a strong community behind them they're more likely to take over a social change. And now you're probably wondering how we want to achieve all of these goals. And therefore I will show you like step by step how we're gonna do it. We have a train the trainers in the beginning of the project and then we foster like local grassroots initiatives. Those grassroots initiatives are there to inspire especially the communities to turn green. And um, therefore we have events and activities, uh, people or those partners who join the project, they come up and uh, foster like the ideas and share it with them. And then it's implemented in the small community. Of course, uh, we do exploit all the roadmaps and guidelines at the end. And something we're very proud of is the new virtual 
network, our platform. And this one I want to introduce to you right now. It will be the main part of this presentation. It's the UWIN platform. Francesco will share the link to the platform with you in the chat so you can all click on it. And when you go on the platform, you can see on the right side, log in. To use like all advantages of the platform, it's important to log in, but the log in process is super easy. And we also have an educational video on how to sign up. So how to register on the platform? You go on the platform and then you check on the right for the login. If you click on there, you have the subscribe button. You just enter your name and your email address. And then you check and verify the password for a second time. And at the end, you have to confirm with again and write down your name and then sign up. After the sign up process, you will receive an email to verify your account. And if you clicked on the email, there will be a link and by clicking on the link, you're finally signed up to the platform. All right. I think for now it's time that we're going on the platform and check this platform out. So this is the platform. Here you can see the groups that are already taking part in the project on the platform. Form. It's, um, we call them also teams. The challenges we um, have on the platform, I will go to that later and also the members so far. Here you can see all the things that are, um, that can be found on the platform, training material, the teams we have, scores for a voting session. I will explain that later and the challenges and the community. You can also select the language. And I will show you now the training material. We have educational videos. If you click on that, you will end up here and have a bunch of videos that show good practices of young women or women in general and their businesses. Furthermore, we have educational training materials. This is a great collection of material, um, especially for entrepreneurial skills or if you want to start a business. For example, here, how to improve entrepreneurial skills. We have all kinds of links shared with you where you can click on, where you can get different kinds of information, whatever you need. Also here, my CV, if you need some inspirations for your CV, you can find everything here as well as fundraising options and so on. But beside the training part in entrepreneurship, we also have our teams. So if you sign up, you can create a team with your local community. And by having a team, you can either join one or like create your own, but by having a team, you can finally participate into green challenges. And here for the guidelines of green challenges, you can get all information what it is. We have different kind of challenges, um, usually one challenge per month. For August and October, we have an exception. We also have two challenges. Then like everything is explained here on how it works and um, you take part in the challenge, then the challenge has a special task that is shown and you kind of contribute to it by following the task. And 
for example, it could be take a video or distribute a flyer about um, green energy and you share it on your Facebook page. Everyone can rate for it who is signed up on the platform. And at the end, the winner will get a national prize that could be, for example, a local radio interview. We also have international prizes at the end of the project. For example, the social hackathon in Umbria in 2023, where you can share your ideas and uh, get help from hackers uh, to promote your idea online or whatever you need, if you need an app or another. But now let's go on all the challenges we have. So at the end, it looks like this. We have our challenges listed here. And if you want to join, you just click on join the challenge. Then if you click on the challenge itself, here, for example, it's the World Nature Conservation Day challenge. It already took place in July. So we also have an outcome here. You find a description of the challenge, what it is about and what you have to do. Here it was to create uh, information material that is shared on all social platforms of the team that is participating. We have a Polish team that was participating. They um, shared the flyer Go Green, Macedonian team, Lithuanian team, and also the team from UK. And this is also um, like their stuff is not only uh, shared on their own social media sites, but also on our platform. And then everyone can vote for this, what they like the most. And at the end, they get the scores for the prices. All right. So far to all the challenges we have. Here we have, for example, the flyer of the Macedonian team, like this is how it looks like. And to um, not only take part in challenges, we also want to have like a community feeling. That's why we have the forum where everyone on the website can ask questions and search for help or uh, new inspirations and ideas. And there you can share your opinions and whatever you want. For example, here, future green challenges. I posted this question a few hours ago. They was asking if there are new ideas for green challenges for the future. And if you have one, you can just reply and share your ideas with us. We already have one answer, which is like, um, stating out it would be nice to make an activity about using uh, waste products and do something new out of it. For example, like biomass energy source. If you also have this kind of things you want to share with us about green challenges, just type in the forum and we would be happy to gain new ideas from you. Okay, so far to the challenge and now we have like a little challenge for you as well and this was would be like a flash green challenge we want to motivate you to get up leave your chairs for a few minutes take a picture around your house about something that is sustainable and show some good practice and um, take this picture and upload it on our Facebook page. Francesco will share a link to our Facebook page, you win. Here we have this post, let's start the fast green challenge. And I want you to take a picture and just comment in um, your picture here. And at the end, the one who gets the most likes on the sustainable picture that was taken that shows some good practice in entrepreneurship as well, will receive a little prize. We will have like an extra entry in our newsletter where we will um, share something about your organization with our members and followers. All right, I would say, let's start. You have five minutes. Ready, go.
by the way, you can also um, share questions and answers or questions in the chat right now. We will answer them during the time the challenge is running. We already have a few questions. Uh, one question that we have received is, can you share some tips on how to engage members on the platform? Sorry, can you repeat that again? Can you share some tips on how to engage members on the platform? Like uh, at first, sign up with your community, especially, and then um, create a team, wait. Let me find where I got it. Okay, Teams. All right, it's loading. So here you can create a group and then you can create your own team. It's best to um, start here with your own community, local community. In the group, you can text and share information with each other so you can build or strengthen your own community and also discuss about the projects and activities you want to participate in and then also the forum is great to connect with people that are registered here it's one of the best options we have you it's like a um random forum where you put in all um, questions you have to this kind of projects like coming up with a new business coming up with ideas or finding niches in rural areas and then everyone can comment on it so you have a um, way better crowd you're reaching out to than just sharing ideas in your own team because this is way more for discussing about it is uh, was the question answered by that i think so but um you know, the question asker in the chat will probably get back to you on that um if there okay. are more open questions um we have another question okay. um and posted in our the q a section um mm -hmm. is it um, do you need to register on the platform to undertake the challenges yes if you want and to how, participate um, are the... yes, yeah so if you want to participate in the challenges you have to register on the platform and also if you want to vote for your team or other teams you have to be registered otherwise you can just uh have a look at it, but not um, participate in it. All right. And how are the challenges promoted? The challenges are promoted via the UWIN platform, of course, and also via the social media platforms we have. We have Instagram and Facebook, and also our partners are sharing the um, events and activities on their platform 
social media platforms, of course. All right. Are there more questions so far? I don't see any further questions at the moment. Um, more okay. may come, but then uh, again, um, as for the others, we can answer those later. Okay. All right. Perfect. So let's see if someone posted on uh, Facebook already uh, a picture of sustainable um, things they have around at their place. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Megan shared her bottle with us, which is made simple re reusable water bottle, best way to low plastic consumption. I like it. For all the others, I know five minutes are a bit short in time, but uh, if you have time to take a picture, just share it with us and then we will see who will win at the end. Okay, so back to the presentation. Next thing I want to do is to share a link for feedback with you because we're running out of time, but it would be great if you could still use like one or two minutes to share with us what you think about the platform and how uh, user friendly it is and also what you think about the green challenges. And therefore, Francesco will share a link with you in the chat if he might have already done so far. And here, if I can uh, uh, jump in, uh, we are looking for new challenges. So the, we have challenges until the end of the year. Uh, but if you have ideas, nice ideas for challenges uh, that you want to discuss with us for next year, you are more than welcome to suggest. Yeah, exactly. And also, we already have the uh, in the forum, we were already asking for it. So if you signed up, you can already share your ideas straight with us in the forum. Okay, let's wait till we have a few responses on the feedback tour. Okay, so we already have first responses. Thank you very much for taking your time and listening to the UWIN project. And um, that's so far from my side. Um, if Altea wants to add something, you're welcome. Otherwise, um, we're done with the presentation of the UWIN project and thank you for your attention a lot. It's all from my from my side as well. Thanks a lot. Then uh, from me, thank you very much for the presentation, and uh, also a big thank you again to all our pre um, presenters so far. Uh, we are at the end of the second block of practices that we are um, featuring today, and we are also um, at time for our lunch break. Uh, we will be back at two where you can uh, then rejoin, where we are expecting um, Victor Negrescu and MEP to speak. And we're also going to connect a bit closer with some of our practices in um, a video visit session. Before we then have our last two practices um, presenting, uh, the Fantasia project and Digi EduHack are still to come. And then the, also the uh, more networking kind of session um, with the Expo and the uh, direct interaction with the practices. Uh, but that's all to come for now. 
uh, I wish you a good lunch break and see you back at two.